Thompson wins it in overtime. Brady can trap, breakaway shoots, scores! Welcome to Sens Talk, my name is Brandon and I am your host today. Ottawa took on the Anaheim Ducks looking to win their second game against the Ducks this season to win the season series. Now before this game begun... Rourke Chartier was recalled from Belleville. Rourke Chartier, if you did not know, has 14 goals in 24 games in the AHL this season. He will center the third line in tonight's game. He has an NHL goal in his NHL career in 13 games, uh, all with the San Jose Sharks before tonight's game. Funnily enough, that one goal in his NHL career was against the Anaheim Ducks. And we'll talk about Chartier later. He actually played pretty well. Uh, moving on now to Wade Redden, who was celebrated before today's game as he is the first player in Senator history to be inducted into the Ring of Honor, joining the late Brian Murray there in the 300 section. It was a very nice ceremony, standing ovation for Wade Redden, one of the all-time greats in Senator history. Congratulations to Wade Redden and his entire family. Great moment there before the game begun. So let's go to the first period of play where six minutes in, Ottawa is off and running. Parker Kelly gets his first of the season with a tip out front off a Zaitsev point shot. 1-0 Ottawa. The Sanders are 5-6-0 when scoring first this season. Let's get to 500 on that stat. Great start here for Ottawa. Zaitsev to Parker Kelly. 1-0 Sanders. Five minutes later, this could be... Frankly, the turning point of the season for the wrong reason. We already lost Josh Norris. We might have lost Tim Stutzla now for long term. Uh, he, he can see on the screen here, took a big hit to the boards. It's been diagnosed as an upper body injury and post-game DJ Smith, the Senator head coach, did not have an update on Tim Stutzla, which means they're probably going to put him in for MRIs and x-rays uh, later tonight, probably tomorrow, and probably by Wednesday we'll have a better idea of what's going on with Tim Stutzla. I'm praying it's not something serious, um, you know, a head injury or a shoulder injury or whatever, because uh, he's had a fantastic season, point-per-game player, uh, he's not even 21 years old. This guy is so young. It would be devastating to see him have a major injury. And on top of that, for the team as well, already losing Josh Norris. I mean, you're already incredibly thin up front uh, with the Joseph injury uh, recently as well. Uh, so you have Norris out. You have Joseph out. You can't afford to have Tim Stutzel out as well for long term. So uh, we'll see what happens with that. Once again, no update. He did not return to the game, however. Ran off the ice after taking that hit from Leeson. Um, and we'll see what happens. If Stutzla is out long-term, Pinto will remain the second-line center, no doubt. But Claude Giroux absolutely will slot in at the number one position. I don't think they want Broussard there. I wouldn't if I was Ottawa. That's no disrespect to you know Derek Broussard. He's actually had a good season with four goals. But you know uh, he's not a first-line center. Claude Giroux is. So he'll probably slot in there. But luckily for Ottawa, less than a minute later, they get on the board again. A little bit of a dimmer mood here after that Stutzla injury. But it's the Brinkat, baby. Meow! 2-0 Sanders, 12 minutes in. Alex Debrinkat on the power play. A nice pass here from Claude Giroux, who did a fantastic job to hold that puck. It's so hard to knock the puck off of Claude Giroux. He holds the puck, draws the ducks towards him, make them puck watch on Claude Giroux, leaving Debrinkat wide open. He slams it in. That is back-to-back -back games with a goal there for Alex Debrinkat, who's having a six-game point streak. Two goals during that span. It will be three later on. We'll get to that in a second. But that positive moment did not last long. A couple minutes later, Tyler Mott drilled into the boards. Another player gets hurt. Tyler Mott did not return to the game as well. Upper body injury as well. And no update on him post game as well. So just like Tim Stutzla probably will be getting some x-rays, MRIs, whatever you want to call it. Uh, we'll probably get a better update on him on Wednesday. Ah, <sighs> jeez. I mean, the Ducks, they were doing this last time we played them in Anaheim. Strom with that huge hit on, uh, was it Lassie Thompson or Jake Sanderson? I forget, but Kachuk fought him right away. The Ducks, I'm sorry, they're one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. They're a dirty team. They're frustrated out there, and they're taking the frustrations out on some good players, some good young talent. It's absolutely disgraceful that Ottawa did not fight a single Duck player tonight. I'm sorry. No one dropped the gloves after that hit to Stutzla. No one dropped the gloves after that hit to Mott. We've seen this time and time again. Same thing happened with Batherson when he got hurt last year against Buffalo. No one fought the Buffalo Sabres that game. It's pretty strange to see an Ottawa Senator team not fight in these type of situations. From 92 to, frankly, like 2018, 2019, the Senators were always a gritty, pesky team willing to fight and stand up for their teammates. I'm not saying the Sens don't want to stand up for their teammates, 
But I am a little surprised they didn't drop the gloves. Now, I understand there was 10 forwards, uh, you know, on that bench. They were really undermanned. But sometimes you have to send a message. And they didn't. They don't often send a message. And um, just not happy with that whatsoever. Really not impressed with that. And the score remained 0-0. Both goaltenders in this period made some big stops, both making 12 as well. Dostal, a young goalie prospect in the Anaheim Ducks system, looked very good tonight making some big stops, including with a couple minutes left in the second period of play. You can see on your screen here, absolutely beautiful stop here on a 3-0 to Mark Kaslik. Don't know how Kaslik didn't bury it there, but Dostal really read that play well. Incredible save there for Dostal who had a really good game, had a few big stops, primarily on Shane Pinto. I think Pinto got stifled two or three times tonight from Dostal alone. So uh, for uh, a team like Anaheim, who's, they're done. They've won like less than 10 games a season. They're not making the playoffs. They're in full rebuild mode. A goaltender like Dostal playing like he did tonight has to be encouraging if you're a Ducks fan. Let's go to the third period of play. And, you know, not much was happening in this game. Ottawa controlled it from beginning to end. And seven minutes into the third period of play, Drake Batherson has a nice little pass up to Alex DeBrincat, who chips it home for his second goal of the game, his third goal in two games. And Ottawa is up by three. It's a 3 nothing game. Nice little pass here from Drake Batherson to Alex DeBrincat. That second line has really woken up as of late. And that will seal it. Ottawa, they played a full 60 minutes. Had a couple of big injuries. We'll see what happens in the next couple days with Stutzla and Mott. But that is a huge victory as their Senators win 3 to nothing over the Anaheim Ducks winning the season series as well. Uh, just a huge win for the Ottawa Senators. They are now 6-2-1 and one of their last nine games as well. So just a great stretch of games so far here for Ottawa in their last like 9-10 games. They've really been performing well. Another huge win tonight for Ottawa. And, you know, look, obviously Stutzla getting hurt is key uh, for Ottawa's chances to be playing meaningful hockey moving forward. If he's out... Ottawa's chances of doing anything going forward are probably out the window as well. So, I don't want to panic. I want to see what happens officially, uh, but really, really tough sign there. But, let's focus on the positives right now. Ottawa wins 3-0. Like I just said, 6-2-1 in their last nine games. And they're fighting. They're trying to get right back into the playoff race. And, I got some game notes here. Firstly, uh, like I just said, all eyes are on Tim Stutzla and Tyler Mott, of course. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Uh, Tim Stutzla... I would expect him to miss some time, frankly. So we will see some possible call-ups here very soon from Belleville. Uh, Ridley Gregg, potentially. Angus Crookshank, who I mentioned in a previous video, I think the last one, that he should be called up. Um, you know, Igor Sokolov is another guy that potentially could be called up. That first line there in Belleville of Greg Crookshank and Sokolov has been playing absolutely insane. Maybe all three get called up, frankly, if Mott is injured as well. Lucini's another option there. He's been playing well the last couple seasons down in the AHL with Belleville. So Ottawa has some options to call up, but hopefully, frankly, I hope none of them have to be called up. I hope Tim Stutzla is fine, and same with Tyler Mott. Now, Cam Talbot, huge game tonight. 32 stops for his first career shutout as an Ottawa Senator. It's also his first win at home at the Canadian Tire Center. I can't believe it. Cam Talbot was 0-5 going into this game at home. He's now 1-5. A huge win here for him. The 23rd uh, goaltender in Senator history to get a shutout for Cam Talbot there. Uh, Chartier, Rourke Chartier. I mentioned him earlier in the video. He played on the third line, was called up. Uh, and he had a really good game, frankly. He brought a lot of speed and energy. He had a goal called back late in the third period for goaltender interference. Uh, just a ridiculous um, sequence of events there with NHL officiating. They call it no goal, call it a goal, then Anaheim challenges, and then is, of course, waved off for no goal because it was clearly goalie interference. Waste of everyone's time. Everyone could have had a free 10 minutes there. But look, for a third-line guy, you're not looking for a guy that's going to score 40, 50 goals. You're looking for a guy that can bring some energy, bring some speed, bring some character, you know, play a solid defensive game as well. Rourke Chardier played very well today, uh, fit all those characteristics, and I definitely can see him sticking around a little bit long-term here. Anyways, though, regardless of who's called up, I think Chardier he deserves to stick around for a little bit. Uh, he had a good game tonight, uh, and he definitely earned a second game with the Ottawa Senators. Now, Brandstrom, speaking of good games, was flying tonight. He hasn't scored, and this was a bizarre stat, in 103 straight games. And I can't believe that, because Eric Brandstrom, frankly, has been playing some of his best hockey in his career ever. And his defensive game has really improved as well. His skating is flawless. The way he goes end-to-end -end multiple times a game. Tonight alone, he went end-to-end -end like two or three times, coast-to-coast. -coast. Just absolutely flawless skating from Eric Brandstrom. He's so talented. I can't believe he hasn't scored in 103 games. It's frankly so unlucky. He's gotten 146 shots during that span as well. So, uh... 
eventually a goal is going to go in for Eric Brandstrom, but I just wanted to mention his name because I really think he played very well tonight, uh, and I just can't believe 103 straight games. I mean, he definitely deserves better luck than that. Now, besides that, the next Senator game is on Wednesday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time versus the Montreal Canadiens. Huge game here at home against Les Habitants. A big rivalry game. So I'll see you all on Wednesday night, hopefully with Tim Stutzla and Tyler Mott in the lineup. Besides that, thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Go Sens Go!